Welcome to their Team Solomon Circus Live Duel. Today we got David playing his Rika deck, as well as Sean on, which I believe he is on uh, Marincess. You know, both decks very strong, coming out with like with power of the duel, uh, power of the elements, as well as legendary uh, duels, Fishman in this deep or whatever it's called. You know, both decks being like extremely upgraded. Um, definitely going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, here he's just showing the new cards, you know, making sure he reads them. So Princess here, level 4, it's a monster negate in the graveyard. Uh, pretty good if you ask me. As well as, you know, Con Con, which is like a, I guess a bounce or a tribute during your opponent's, like, just to be, it's pretty much a tribute for a cost of uh, Eureka stuff, which is extremely good because most of the time it's like, they have one card that's a trap card that's like tribute one monster to tribute one of your opponent's monsters. So they just tribute uh, two of your monsters there. Like, what? that's just insane. Um, trap card, you know, being able to activate it during your opponent's turn. Just tributing two monsters during your combo is kind of cracked, but... Here we're going to see that Rika's going to go off first. They're going to normal summon the pedal. Pretty standard. It's going to search for one of the bigger monsters. Can I feel the effect tributing it to Sustone itself? That's going to be responded to with Imperm here. We do see a Call by the Grave as well as an Ogre in their hand and a Lone Fire Blossom. Oh, it's not a Call by the Grave, that's a Harpy's Feather Duster. We're going to pass it over here. We're going to see Normal Summon a Blue Tang. Blue Tang is going to activate the effect here to send a graveyard a Sea Angel or Sea Horse. Here we're going to see Rika Sheet being activated. Tribute, a Rika monster, a tribute. Uh, when your opponent's monsters, that was a trap card I was just talking about. Um, if Kong Kong was on the field, it would tribute both of them. And so here it actually steals the monster. We're going to see more this dive being activated. Something that's Spring Girl, I guess it wasn't my bad. That's going to get immediately linked away into the blue slug. And then it's going to be added back to hand. Spring Girl's going to be able to hurt. All these Mertz monsters looking the same. I don't think that is Spring Girl. I think that is, in fact, the um, the uh, the Seahorse. Anyways, going into linking into Angel, getting the field spell. Field spell is going to be activated. Linking both of those away into the Coral Enemy. Um, Seahorse is going to be summoned out. Linking both of those two away into, I believe that's Triangle here. Then Battle Ocean is going to activate. Um, equipping two that's going to be responded to with Ghost Ogre. You know, extremely strong here. Um, getting rid of that big monster is quite huge. The trap's going to be added to hand off the effect. Um, you know, searching for an Imperm that also makes your monsters unaffected is definitely not something to be laughed at. Um, here you're going to be able to banish, summon two out. Just enter battle phase. Um, I believe enter battle phase. And just linking both of those away for a Marble Rock. Uh, battle is going to fit equipping. Change is going to be added back to hand. Banishing one for the Spring Girl. Is that a Sea Angler being special summoned here? You know, going out for the totally awesome here with the Bahamut Shark. Detaching a special summon. Definitely a cool combo. Linking both of those away off into the, the new big level 4. Or, not level 4, my bad. Um, Link 4. Equipping, you know, all three. You know, having a negate as well. Um, Spring Girl here is going to mill, so hitting the Nibiru, you know, not doing any damage here. And here we're going to enter battle phase, attack with both of those. Here, Petal Flex is going to be activated, special summoning itself. We're going to see Petal Activate, you know, adding the 
Level 8 once again. I believe it's level 8. Gonna activate the effect attributed to special summon itself. That's gonna be responded to with a toad. That's gonna be set to the opponent's side of the field. You know, extremely strong. I don't believe David has anything for this here, you know, having Lone Fire Blossom in hand. Um, or we see Harpy's Feather Dust being activated here. It's going to be mostly responded to within a gate. Um, it was in the gate, it's Bow and Trap, and special summon one of the monsters. So we're going to special summon the Marbled Rock um, and negate that effect. Lone Fire Blossom, we normal summon, activating the effect, getting out that level 8, anyways. And here we're going to respond with. Marinthus Wave as the Imperm, you know, is not letting that card resolve at all. It's the third copy there, you know, just definitely like the main card of the deck. We're going to see a simple pass. We're going to normal summon a blue tang, um, dumping the Sea Maiden. And does not look so good for David here. Enrica's. Uh, I do not think they're going to be able to survive this turn, you know, being able to make so much monsters going on field. Sea Angler is going to be special summoned here, going into the Sea Kragen, and then that's going to be flip face up, enter battle phase, and just going to be game there. Um, so quick game one for the Marinsis player. Definitely some interesting, some text there. I do like that Sea special summoning thing. That one's pretty cool. You know, going through all those... Uh, monsters on david's side of the field it's kind of kind of unfortunate you know that not resolving at all is quite unfortunate but it happens so you know maybe david will come back and turn game two and three if he has a way to get to the field spell you know he's able to like shut off a lot of their link summons um as you saw like you know trying to start it off by attributing that monster you know not letting him go into a link one all together now, if I imagine that was a Link 2, or not a Link 2, uh, a Tribute 2, um, you know, you could let them go into their Link Summon, and once they have the second one, they could just, you know, tribute that both off, you know, not having that, but you, you do have Marincis Dive, so, you know, they do not just have, like, a one normal summon kind of thing that a lot of the, um, Cyber Stacks have going for them. They don't really need to stick their normal summon onto the field. But yeah, you guys let me know in the comment section what you guys think of these decks. Um, they're definitely quite interesting. I have lots I want to see. Um, personally, I think that the Marinsis deck is extremely underrated. Uh, it has so much potential. In the hands of a great player, you know, definitely, like, as we saw, got some tops and everything. So here we're going to go into game two. We're going to see that Rika's going to once again going to go first. And we're going to see a normal summon of a level 4, I believe. We see Princess going to be activated here. It's about summoning itself. That is Ash Blossom in David's hand here. We're going to link both of those away into the Sylvan Plant Link. And definitely another insane card. We do see a cosmic cyclone in the hand as well so we see two you know two cards not card of his combo but not also high impact the sylvan link here is going to activate and it's going to get impermed we're going to simply set one and pass the sylvan link is quite insane to be honest we see blue tang be activated here or be normal summoned and then activated dumping the uh Picalis to graveyard Linking that away into the blue slug, plus, uh, plus summoning or activating the effect of, or adding back blue, and then blue is going to activate, you know, milling to, uh, it doesn't really matter what it mills, because it hit a maroon says dive, so it gets to add to hand, which is quite insane. We're going to see a ocean being activated, we're going to see seahorse be to summon itself. We're going to be able to link that away into Sea Angel here. Sea Angel is going to activate adding the Marincis Dive. Um, you know, having it for follow-up is also great. Linking both of those away into 
most likely Coral and Enemy here, but yeah, so going into Coral and Enemy, gonna activate the effect to summon back out the Palace, then special summon out the uh, Blue Tang. Making the Bahama Shark here, you know, activating the effect, it's going to get responded to with Cosmic. Oh, yeah, so that's the effect's gonna be activated, you know, chaining Cosmic to get rid of that Battle Ocean. Not wanting those, you know, monsters being able to be equipped is it's quite huge, you know. Making that the um, Miranda's monsters are not able to gain that much attack. Uh, Toad's going to be summoned out, and then we're going to be able to banish. To summon out the Spring Girl. Miranda's Dive's going to activate. Um, summoning from deck here. Getting out the... Uh, um, the stealth Kraken. I don't think that it can summon from deck because Battle Ocean is not on the field. But that might just be a forgotten part right now. We're going to see a linking off into the uh, the triangle here. Sienna is going to be added back to hand. We're going to add a Wave to feel a uh, hand to field, you know, getting that imperm from hand is and making all the monster on effect is huge. Enter battle phase here. We're gonna see a desires being activated, you know, already having a bunch of cards in hand, but just wanting to get more. And we're following with an ash blossom here, you know, keeping that ash blossom for like a moment like this, banishing 10 and not being on the draws is quite huge. So, we're gonna see battle phase, we're going to see the triangle attack, see. Kraken attack as well as the Toad attack. And we're gonna see David scoop it up with just an Ash Blossom and an Imperm in hand. So we see that Marincess takes it here. You know, David not being able to play too much, you know, quite unfortunate here, but that's why they see the power of Marincess.